for Honey, I Blew Up the Kid, there was a uh, shot where the toddler is approaching Vegas. And he steps over this highway. It's framed by this canyon. So we had these hills made out of uh, two by fours and chicken wire and carpeting. And once again, <laughs> I don't know. It, it, you know, for model work, uh, you tend to use a lot of used carpeting. And so once again, we raided uh, the backs of uh, carpet uh, retail stores. And but that was all dressed out. The sand is layered on it little miniature lichen that you get from train hobby stores to fir bushes. A miniature sign was made. A Model T car was kind of made derelict and put off to the side. Then you had these, these street lamps that lined the little street that the toddler's going to walk down. And what was interesting about that, the, the little lamps were practical. They actually lit up, but they didn't have enough light. So on stage, they had these little less than 1K spotlights over each lamp shooting straight down on top of them to create a, a wider pool of light. Problem with that was that the top of the lamps were lit up really bright. So Ron Gress went in there with some flat black paint and actually painted the tops of these light heads black to reduce their uh, visual signature. And I think they framed the camera a little lower so you don't see as much. I was uh, helping out Henry Gonzalez and this was in a scene where the toddler is near the Hard Rock Cafe where the helicopter is orbiting the toddler, you know, the mother is to grab the helicopter out of the air. Henry had modified this one third second scale Gravel Huey helicopter, and we figured out a way to have the main rotor motorized and the tail rotor motorized and lit. Being a hand prop miniature, and it's going to be in camera, we had to figure out a way to turn it on and off. Well, at the back of a uh, Huey, you have this little skid that sticks out like a stinger that prevents the tail rotor from being hit if the tail hits the ground. So you pull on a wire and you turn it on and turn it off. And uh, unfortunately, Mark Stetson had to take it to the set and we forgot to tell him <laughs> how to turn it on. So he spent an hour trying to figure out how to turn it on. Luckily, they, they figured out how to... Uh, he called Henry and Henry said, you just pull on the tail. And so they got a take... And then the helicopter was put on, I think, on the edge of the set. And as Marsha Strassman is walking off the set, uh, someone had moved the steps for something. It was like an apple box. Had moved it, and she didn't know. And she took a tumble and wiped out the little helicopter. A lamp streetlight was needed for that little intersection. So I went ahead and I started out with a... Uh, one inch diameter thin wall tube and then uh, the actual lamps, the street lamps were also practical. Each had a grain and wheat bulb and the little cross don't walk sign is actually practical too because uh, the little light can was separate so you had one light not bleed into the other, other part of that little walk don't walk sign. Then there was a reverse shot of the toddler walking towards Vegas so out in um, Palmdale if I remember right uh, Mark and Bob and maybe Ian or it could have been Scott. Um, they set up a real nice, simple, outskirts of Vegas looking shot. So you have all these miniature cutouts that have the Vegas strip in the, in the background. And in the foreground is a street, another street that vanished uh, to infinity is forced perspective. And we had bought a um, one quarter scale uh, tanker truck to be pulled on a cord across the camera frame as the taller then crosses the street. And the end gag on that was, if you, if you happen to see it, but I don't think you see it in the film, well, they made a silhouette of the driver you know, sleeping as he's crossing through frame.